I want to start by thanking all of my viewers and subscribers, and especially my channel members, my VIPs, whose names are on the screen right now. Buckethead, you know I think you're amazing, but today I want to highlight three particular members, Ronin, Ruth, and Seamus. All three of them are usually the first to comment on my videos, and they give such great advice, so thank you guys. Anyway, on with the video. Joachim Kroll was a German serial killer who killed at least 13 girls and women, as well as one man, between 1955 and 1976 in the rural area of West Germany. He was a deranged sexual psychopath who raped, murdered, mutilated and consumed the flesh of many of his victims. He was eventually caught whilst the body parts of one of his victims was simmering on the stove. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Joachim George Kroll was born on the 17th of April 1933 in Hindenburg in the former province of Upper Silesia which is now a part of modern Poland. He was one of eight children. Kroll is described as being a quote weak child who was of below average intelligence with recent estimates putting his IQ at 76 well below what is considered quote unquote average. Kroll was a shy and withdrawn child who was described as a loner who had few friends. He only attended school until the age of eight due to his learning difficulties and instead regressed into his own little world in his room. Kroll's father left the family home to fight in World War II but was taken prisoner by the Russians and although it appears he survived the war in a prison of war camp he didn't return back to the family home. Because of the war the family moved to the rural area of Germany moving as far from the eastern front as they could. Kroll later told police that when he was a teenager he had witnessed someone slaughtering pigs and had become sexually aroused by the sight of their blood. Thoughts about strangling, killing and butchering women and children became the focus of his masturbatory fantasies. It got to the point where he could not get aroused unless he was imagining violence against women and female children. Kroll was a failure with women. He could not speak to them and when it came to performing sexually he could not get an erection so he became fixated on sexual acts with unconscious or dead partners. On the 21st of January 1955, the only real link Kroll had to society, his mother, died. She appears to be the only reason that he did not escalate his behaviour before. Within weeks, Kroll began a murder spree that lasted over 20 years, with his crimes escalating his savagery to the point where he committed acts of pure evil. On the 8th of February 1955, just weeks after the death of his mother, Kroll was in the village of Valstead when he came across 19-year-old Ermgard Strell, a runaway, who was walking along a road. Kroll invited her to go for a walk into the woods. Around 120 metres into the woods and out of view of the road, Kroll tried to kiss Ermgard. She resisted and he then stabbed her four times in the neck and then strangled her before raping her. It seems likely while she was still alive, and then also after she died. He also cut her stomach open, so she was found with her guts hanging out of her body when she was found five days later. A large quantity of semen was found in and on her body, which led police to believe they were looking for more than one attacker. At some point in 1956, Kroll strangled to death and raped 12-year-old Erika Schilletta in an area of Germany where the city of Bottrop now stands. It's believed that there was then a break of around three years until Kroll claimed his next victim, and this appears in part to him being careful about his offending. He would only commit crimes in certain areas, often with significant gaps between the murders, in order to avoid detection. To meet his need for violent sexual acts between murders, he acquired a number of sex dolls, including ones that resembled small children, as well as a full-sized plastic one, which resembled an adult woman. Kroll would masturbate while strangling these dolls, and, with regards to the life-size doll, would have his hands around its throat whilst having sex with it. After each murder, he would come home and have sex with his dolls, no doubt reliving the crimes he'd just committed. His next confirmed murder was on the 16th of June 1959, when Kroll came across 24-year-old Clara Frieda Tesma. He came across her in the district of Rheinhausen, near the Grafsby Bridge, over the River Rhine. Kroll stated that he grabbed Clara, 
and tried to drag her into some woods, but she resisted, so he hit her over the head. He then tried to undress her, but she came to and fought back. During this time, he strangled her before fleeing the scene. Police investigated this crime, and a local man was arrested. Unfortunately, other men being considered suspects for Kroll's crimes is a recurring theme. On this occasion, the man arrested, Heinrich Ott, apparently hanged himself in prison. Just over a month later, on the 26th of July 1959, Kroll lured 16-year-old Manuela Knott into a forest outside the city of Essen, where he strangled her to death and then had sex with her body. Due to the isolated location, Kroll was able to spend many hours with Manuela's body and he masturbated over her corpse. When her body was found, the amount of semen at the crime scene again led investigators to believe that she had been attacked by multiple men. However, this crime was different. Kroll later said that, quote, on a whim, he decided to cut pieces of Manuela's body off in order to try and see what human flesh tasted like. He cut pieces off her buttocks and thighs, took them home, cooked them, and ate them. Kroll later stated that he enjoyed the taste and decided to cannibalise further victims in order to save on his grocery bills. This is clearly not true. It's apparent that Kroll got a sexual thrill from eating his victims, and this added another element to his crimes, allowing him to gain even more sexual gratification after the event. Six months later, a man, likely with significant mental health issues, walked into a police station and confessed to the murder of Manuela. He later retracted his confession, but spent three years in prison before being exonerated. After Manuela's murder, Kroll would stalk and seek out women and children who he believed looked, quote, tender, who would provide the sweetest meat. Again, there appears to be a break in Kroll's offending. It did not strike again until the 23rd of April 1962. On this date, 13-year-old Petra Gies was at a fair with a friend. It's believed that Kroll saw her and followed her, then lured her into some woods outside the town of Dinslaken before strangling her with her own scarf, raping her and then mutilating her body. Kroll removed both of Petra's buttocks before sawing off her hand and left forearm. He then took these home and ate them. The next day, her body was found and police quickly made an arrest, a local man who had a previous history of sex offences. He was tried, convicted and sent to prison for 12 years, eventually serving six before he was released. On the 4th of June 1962, 13-year-old Monica Taffel was walking to school in the Duisburg district of Walsum. Unfortunately, Kroll was also in the area, looking for someone to kill and eat. Kroll approached Monica when she was on an isolated stretch of road and dragged her into a rye field. He strangled her to death before masturbating over her corpse. He then cut meat from her buttocks and her thighs. When Monica did not return home from school, her frantic parents called the police, who launched an extensive search, including use of a police helicopter. Her broken body was seen from the air, and officers went and recovered her remains. It was noted that pieces of meat cut from her body were around the size of steaks. Again, a local man was arrested, 34-year-old Walter Quicker, but he was soon released. However, his neighbours thought he was guilty, and he lost everything as a result of his arrest. In October 1962, he went to some nearby woods and hanged himself. Victim 7 was 12-year-old Barbara Bruder, who was abducted by Kroll on the 3rd of September 1962, as she walked from her home to a playground in Lutzenkirchen. Kroll strangled her to death, then had sex with her corpse. Her body was never found. On the 2nd of August 1965, Kroll was lurking around a lover's lane in Grossenbaum when he came across a car containing 25-year-old Hermann Schmitz and Marion Veen. Some reports say the pair were just sitting in the car, others state that Kroll watched the pair have sex. Regardless, he snuck up on the vehicle and used a knife to deflate one of the tyres. Herman got out to investigate and was promptly attacked, being stabbed in the heart. Clearly, Kroll's main target was Marion, but she was able to fend him off, get behind the wheel of the car and drive away. Herman was Kroll's only male victim. Likely worrying he'd be caught, Kroll went to ground and did not kill again for a year. His next victim was 20-year-old Ursula Rowling, who, on the 13th of September 1966, was at an ice cream parlour in the town of Marl. Kroll saw her and waited for her to leave, 
which she did at 7pm. He then followed her, and when she took a shortcut through a park to get home, he attacked. Kroll described killing Ursula as follows, quote, I saw this woman in the park. She was young, with short hair. I spoke to her, and then grabbed her around the neck with my right arm. I dragged her into the bushes, and threw her on the ground. I choked her until she stopped moving. Then I took off her pants, and her other things, and I did it to her. I left her lying there, and took the train back to Duisburg. When I got home, I was still hot, and I had it with the doll, and did it with my hand a couple of times. A local man was arrested and questioned about the murder. He was innocent, but tried and convicted in the court of public opinion, and he subsequently committed suicide by drowning himself. Three months later, on the 2nd of December 1966, Kroll attacked five-year-old Iona Hark in the city of Verpital. Instead of strangling her, he drowned her in a river, stating he wanted to know what it was like to see someone die by drowning. He then raped her corpse and cut meat from her buttocks, shoulders and thighs, which he took home and ate. Kroll was becoming more confident and more arrogant, and he began to offend closer and closer to home and even target people known to him. In 1967, he settled in the town of Grafenhausen and began to befriend the local children, who called him, quote, uncle. On the 22nd of June, 1967, he lured one of these children into a field and showed them pornography, hoping they would become sexually aroused. When they did not, and they ran away screaming, Kroll chased this child and began to choke her. But at this point, the siren for the change of shift as local mine went off, so the area was swarming with workers. So, he left this child and scurried away. He moved out of the area the next day to avoid questions from the police, but the child's parents would not report this incident until years later, after Kroll's capture. On the 22nd of June 1967, Kroll killed his oldest victim, 61-year-old Maria Hetgen. Kroll came across her while she was walking along the banks of Lake Baldony. He stated later he got a, quote, tickling feeling all over and went to speak to her. She declined to engage. He then hit her over the head, dragged her into some bushes, strangled and raped her. Kroll began killing again in 1970, but only claimed one victim during this year, 13-year-old Yuta Ran. Kroll followed her off a train at Hossel train station, and in order to get home, she needed to walk through some woods, and this is where she was attacked. She was strangled to death and then raped by Kroll. A local man was arrested and in prison for 15 months for this murder, before eventually being released. Kroll's rampage was finally brought to an end in 1976, but only because of his own stupidity and arrogance. During this year, 10-year-old Corinne Topher was raped and strangled on her way to school in the town of Dinslaken. On the 3rd of July 1976, Kroll's 14th and last victim, four-year-old Marion Ketter, disappeared from a playground in the Lahr district of Duisburg. This was the same area that Kroll was living in and only a short distance away from his apartment block. Rather than killing her in the open and leaving her body, Kroll abducted Marion and took her back to his apartment. He then strangled and raped her before butchering her body. He flushed her internal organs down the communal toilet which soon became blocked. Later that day, this was noticed by one of his neighbours, who also used the toilet, and he asked Kroll about it. Bizarrely, Kroll said the toilet was, quote, clogged with guts. He was also seen disposing of bloody clothing in a bin outside. The next day, police were searching for the missing girl and making house-to-house inquiries, which led them to Kroll's apartment. The neighbour told police about his strange conversation with Kroll, and about the bloody items he had seen him disposing of. The police recovered these items, and so were instantly suspicious, and a plumber was called. He confirmed that the drains were blocked with human organs, specifically child's intestines, lungs, kidneys, liver and heart. The police went straight into Kroll's apartment, and what they found inside was like something out of a horror movie. In the freezer, they found bags of human flesh, both from Marion but it would appear from previous victims. On the stove, they found Marion's severed hand boiling in a pot with carrots and potatoes. Kroll was arrested on the spot, and so, 
After more than 20 years and at least 14 victims, Joachim Kroll's reign of terror was at an end. Kroll was originally only suspected of the murder of Marion Ketter, which he freely confessed to. However, he then admitted to a further 13 murders, none of which he was a suspect for, and which, as already stated, other men had confessed to and been arrested for. Kroll went into graphic detail about each murder, where he found the victims, what they looked like, and what he did to them. Kroll was taken to each murder site and forced to engage in reenactments to demonstrate what he'd done to his victims. These reconstructions were photographed, leading to, I would suggest, some truly bizarre moments forever captured on film. I assume this was deemed necessary to ensure that Kroll was being honest and was not, like others had before him, making false confessions. Bizarrely, Kroll seemed to think that because he confessed to multiple murders, he would then receive an operation to rid him of his homicidal tendencies and then be released back into the community. Instead, police were able to gather enough evidence to charge him with eight counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. He was then remanded to prison to await his day in court. His fate was handed down on the 8th of April 1982, when, after a 151-day trial, Kroll was found guilty on all charges and given a life sentence. However, this would only translate to about nine years, as, on the 1st of July 1991, at the age of 58, Joachim Kroll, the quote, royal cannibal, died in Rhinebeck prison. He never expressed any remorse for his crimes. I must confess that I didn't know about the crimes of Joachim Kroll before making this video. I'm surprised he's not more well known. Instead, Armin Mivers is probably the most notorious German cannibal, but I think you'll agree Kroll's crimes were far more horrific and are more akin to the offences of people like Jeffrey Dahmer. However, this unknown case, to me at least, gives me a new profile to work on. So it's clear that Kroll was an inadequate and weak man one who wanted to approach women but couldn't. I think there's information missing about his past, something about his hatred of women. Potentially, this resulted from his rejection by them, or something else. Regardless, he had fancies about violence towards women, no doubt enjoying feeling total control and power over them whilst they cried out as he inflicted pain on them, whether this was from beating them or attacking them with weapons. These fantasies speak to the wider motivation of Kroll's offending, to punish, dominate and control. At some point, these fantasies were not enough and Kroll got dolls to live them out. But, over time, he needed further escalation and began to target people. It's important to point out the sadistic nature of his offending, shown by how he killed his victims, either strangling them or, on one occasion, drowning them. Strangulation is an up close and personal way to kill someone, literally looking into their eyes while she squeezed the life out of them. It's a horrific way to die. It's like his victims fought, cried and screamed for their lives while he wrung the life out of them. The same with drowning. He would have held the victim's head under water and felt them fight and eventually slacken against his grip. No doubt Kroll was sexually aroused during the killing itself, but this was just the beginning. He was clearly a man who derived gratification from every single part of his process. When his victims were dead, Kroll now had a sexual partner who, unlike the women before, could not reject him. He was in total control and could do whatever he wanted. No complaints, no judgement, and he would violate their bodies sometimes for hours. Kroll predominantly targeted children. I believe this was likely for two reasons. Firstly, he was clearly a paedophile but also, he was clearly not a physically imposing man, and, by targeting children, he would believe that he could overpower them and ensure the kill. The body parts he took, I think, were his trophies. In the short term, he could sit and admire them whilst continuing to masturbate and having sex with his dolls, but then, he consumed his victim's flesh. Again, this was clearly sexually motivated, and I think he was aroused and got a huge sexual thrill with each mouthful as it enabled him to relive the crime itself. But also, it can be argued that devouring someone is the ultimate act of domination by a predator 
and the ultimate act of submission by the prey. He dehumanised his victims to the point where they were just things, just sacks of meat to get his sexual kicks. Kroll never showed any remorse for his actions. In fact, I think his confession was to brag about how prolific he was. He had no empathy for any of the people he killed. And this is clearly indicative of his psychopathic personality. But, in a wider context, I think that Kroll didn't see anything wrong in his behaviour. He knew that there were laws prohibiting the acts he committed, so he had to avoid detection, but likely didn't understand or care why. I think this is because his whole life revolved around fantasising about and committing acts of complete depravity, and to him, this was normal. His complete disconnect from the reality of how others saw his behaviour, I think was shown by him believing that the authorities would simply give him some sort of operation to stop him killing, and then pat him on the head and send him on his way. Absolute madness. Luckily, instead, the authority threw him in a deep dark hole where he spent the remainder of his days. But this was only the next nine years, meaning that he served a total of seven months for each of the murders he committed, and these were only the ones he remembered. It's like he killed many more. So, what are your thoughts on this case? Had you heard about the crimes of Joachim Kroll before? If you like the content, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button. This is £2.99 a month, or around $4. You get early access to videos, and an icon next to your name, which changes from bronze, to silver, to gold, depending on how long you've been a member. Also, consider sending a super thanks, which is a one-off payment to support the channel. Also, please like, share and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.